In this section, we're going to talk more about the JavaScript object model, learn how to read and write tags, and make some more progress on our debug window project, which is going to be really useful for us as we continue doing scripting exercises. First, let's go to help and show help. And in the search box, I'm just going to type unified object model. And there is a WinCC Unified Object Model. You want to make sure that what you're looking at says Unified rather than Advanced because that's Visual Basic Script. And this is just a visual representation of how we access objects in runtime through scripting. Your main interface is HMI Runtime. And from that, we have all the different elements that make up SCADA visualization and some utility functions. So we have alarming, alarm logging, connections, which is your PLC connections, database, devices, file system, math, tags, tag logging, you name it. And so in the case of tags, notice that tags is yellow along with a few other things. Yellow means that this is either a list or what is called a factory, which just means it generates references to the item you select. For the list of tags, each element is just referred to as a tag, no S. And then we have enums and sysfuncs. And sysfunc is our system functions that allow us to interact with the tags. And primarily we want to read or write tags, but there's a few other things that we can do. So going back to the engineering software, let's go to our tag table and we're going to create a tag and let's just call it speed. So I'll double click add new and the online delta load warning will come up meaning we'll have to do a full compile now. That's okay, we'll just choose yes. And it's just an internal tag connection. Now, if I use my open items and click on JavaScripting, notice that I still have my default tag table selected and there's my speed tag. So I can just drag this up and drop it. And if we look at the properties, we find that that is just an IO field that was created. And if you look at your process value property, you can see that it is connected to the speed tag. So in runtime, we will be able to see the value of the speed tag as well as change it. So now I wanna just add a button and we'll do a quick example of writing to the tag. So on our button for the text property, I will just put write tag. And on events, on our left mouse button event, we'll go ahead and click the JavaScript window. So we'll go ahead and hit our autocomplete button. And you can see we have HMI runtime. I can add a dot and it's going to give me the same list. I can get, get to tags that way. But there's also a shortcut you can use. We can just use tags. We have enums, we have item, and we have sysfunc. So one way to write to a tag is just use the sysfunc and place a dot and it gives us some functions. So we can set tag value, we can set a bit in a tag, reset, invert a bit, all kind of options. So we could use set tag value. And if we put a parenthesis, you can see it's asking for the name of the tag that you want to write to and the value you would like to write to it. So the name of our tag is speed. So you have to make sure you get the case right. And we'll just write a 23 to it and add a semicolon. So we'll save this and just test this out in runtime. Click the button and we will see a 23 in the IO field. Now that's not the only way to write a tag. I'm just going to make a copy of this button and go back to the function Another way is to just access the tags list. Since tags is a list, you can put an open parenthesis right after it and get a reference directly to the tag. So we can just put our tag here and then add a dot and it's going to give us all the methods and properties of the tag object. So we can reset a bit, we can read a tag, you can see the list for yourself. And we have a write method we know it's a method because of the flying blue eraser. And we can just put in a value here. So we'll just add 45. And we'll save that and go to runtime. In runtime, we can hit the button and you can see that it changes to 45. 
So going back to the object model, anything that is a list can be accessed in different ways. You can either use the system functions to interact with the object, or you can identify the item in the list, in our case, the specific tag in the list of tags, create a reference to it, and then interact with it that way. So now let's do an example of reading a tag. But first I want to take a quick look again at the help. I'm going to go back to the WinCC Unified Object Model and look at the topics. And I want to click on the Objects link. And this is going to have information on the objects that are listed in the object model. So you can see it's the same list. And let's go down to Tags. So under Tags, we have the Tags object, and that is a list of the tags. Then we have the Tag object, that is an individual tag. And then we have Tag Set, which is a group of tags clicking on tag, then we can get information about the description. So you can see from HMI Runtime, you have a list of tags, yellow. And then for each tag, you can get the tag object and get all the information about a tag object, namely the properties. So here you see from the tag object, we can get an error description, the last error, the name of the tag, quality code, value, all good information if we're working with tags and scripts. If we look at the method, these are the things that we ask the tag to do, like read or write. So let's take a look at the read method. So at the read method, you can see that when you read, you can get the value, the quality code, and the timestamp, and you can read those properties and get the information. And it also takes an optional parameter called read type. And this is if you want to do synchronous or asynchronous. So for an internal tag, we're not even going to use this HMI read type. So there's a lot of good information in the help on the object model. So if you're working with different objects, it's a good idea to come back and, and review that. And you can see how to use these objects and methods. Going back to the engineering system, we'll add a button. And on the properties of this button, we're just going to make the text read tag. And if we go to the events, we can open up the JavaScript window. And looking at the auto completion under tags, we could just put in the name of our tag to get a reference. And you can see that there is a read. And we could even store this in a variable. So we can just say let tag speed value equal and of course we have to put an open and close parenthesis at the end of read and a semicolon so this will read the value of the tag into tag speed value however we're not going to really see anything on the ui so it's not really all that helpful for our first example here we're going to print out the value and we're going to use the hmi trace function so we'll drop down to the next line, go back to auto completion, go to HMI runtime, dot, and then at the very bottom we have a trace function. And the trace function, if we put an open parenthesis, it just takes a string, a group of characters. And with JavaScript, it's kind of data type insensitive where I can just print a message. So I use a single quote and just say the value of speed is and then I'll just do a plus sign. And then I'm just going to copy this in. And then I'll put another plus and just put a period at the end of it. So this string will just embed whatever tag speed value is. The question is, where can we see this string? And I'm going to go to runtime and then I'll show you how to open the trace utility. So we will download and go to runtime. So we'll go to JavaScripting. Before you press the button, open your file explorer to your C drive or wherever you have TIA Portal installed. Go to Program Files, Siemens, Automation, Portal V17, and Ben. Now the name of the app is called RTIL, or it starts with RTIL, so you can just put an R there. And there's your RTIL Trace Viewer.exe. And I highly recommend pinning it to your taskbar or at least creating a shortcut because this is something that you're going to want if you're developing portal applications. So I've pinned mine to the taskbar. 
and then I'm just going to go ahead and run it. So I'm going to make my runtime window small so that we can have both the trace viewer and runtime up. And you can see there's a lot of entries already here. So the trace viewer shows traces from many different TIA portal subsystems and Windows services. So we're going to use the filter function to filter only for runtime scripting events, script FW. So you can see there's a checkbox there. Okay, I'll make this a little smaller now. And I'll just hit clear to clear out all the entries. And then let's write in a value into our tag and call our script. So notice that we have an information message here. And if we open that, you see that we have our trace message here. The value of the speed tag is 45. So that's where the string from our script ends up. Now granted, this is a lot to go through just to get something you printed out in a script to see kind of what's going on. We're gonna be creating our own debug window inside our TIA portal project that makes this whole thing a lot easier. However, the trace viewer is great for debugging. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go back to the engineering environment and we'll go back to our script. Now, if I put in the name of a tag that doesn't exist here, it's going to throw an error. So that's good because that means that you're going to be limiting any errors from typing in tag names. But it doesn't do the same thing with variables because when you're writing code, you can pull in variables from other sources that it can't check. So it just kind of trusts you, but there is no variable name tag speed value one, two, three. So let me save this and go to run time and let me show you how the trace viewer handles this. Okay, so we'll pull the trace viewer back up and I'll clear the messages and then I'll call read tag again. Now this time we get two entries and they're orange. One is just showing a general error and it's giving you the header file that was involved and things like that. But this one tells me exactly what happened. It says, hey, on the JavaScript page, on the events context, which we're gonna learn about later, on this button eight on tapped, it says there's a reference error. Tag speed value 123 is not defined, and it shows you the line of code and exactly where in that line of code the error occurred. So this is a really great tool. If you're debugging a script, it'll tell you exactly what's going on. However, for just printing out strings and things like that, we're gonna create an example that you'll find useful in projects that you do from now on. So that's how we use the trace viewer, and I'm just gonna go minimize this, and we'll go back to our engineering software. So now I have a challenge for you. What I would like you to do is on the script for your read tag, modify this script to write the text string that we sent to the trace function, but instead write it to our text box. And you're probably going to need to make your text box a little larger, depending on the size of your sentence. So go ahead and pause the video, complete the challenge, and then when you come back, I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so in the white space below our trace function, I'll just tap autocomplete, screen dot, I'll type in find, find my find item, and I can just hit tab and it'll autocomplete. Open parenthesis, and since we named our text box something very easy to remember, I can just type that in. And we want to access the text property, and we will set that equal to the string here and semicolon. So then I'll save this and go to runtime to test it out. And we'll go to the JavaScripting page, click our read tag button, and you can see that we have our sentence here. So printing debug statements to the text field is a lot simpler and a lot more convenient than using the trace viewer utility. This particular solution needs some work. So in the next video, we're going to create our own debug screen that we could use for any page. And we're gonna learn about the screen's property and event context threads for scripting.